Welcome to, today, to today's presentation, The Easy Way to Sell on eBay and Shipping with the United States Postal Service. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Dana Crawford and I've been an eBay seller since 1997. I make a living full time on eBay. You can visit my eBay store and I'll give you that information at the end. Um, you can learn about me just by visiting my website. I want to bore you with all my details, but you can um, find out more about me online. I also am a consignment seller and I sell items for other people. So besides hunting, I love the treasure hunts and hunting for items to sell. I sell about anything under the sun and everything. <laughs> and that's about it for me. So let's just jump in. I know many of you come to my workshops because of receiving a flyer in the mail or finding a flyer at the post office. The post office has an awesome marketing um, opportunity for all small businesses or people that um, maybe you lost your dog or you're having a yard sale or you have a church that needs to spread the word. Every door direct mail is an amazing way to get the word out there and it lets you focus by zip codes. So you can target a zip code in your area and it will, um, you can send flyers out to those and it costs about a little less than 18 cents a, a piece of paper. It could be a full page, it could be both sides and there's a lot, um, a lot of details. I know one company that actually added magnets to theirs and still for 18 cents it's pretty cheap uh, way to market and advertise. So in my follow-up email, I have more information about Every Door Direct Mail, or you could just search it online at the United States Postal Service website and find out more about Every Door Direct Mail. Okay, so I have worked hard to put my presentations together, so I just ask you not to sell it. <laughs> I don't wanna see my presentation up on eBay. And thank you again for coming and enjoying this. I hope you enjoy it, this presentation. Now, we don't have, when I have a large group, I always have to ask everybody to hold questions until the end. Or you can write down your questions if we run out of time and then email them to me. But many times your questions are answered. So if you write them down and then at the end, if of course, as I'm going along, if they get answered, excuse me, then just go ahead and, and cross it off. Otherwise, I'm also going to show you, I'm going to give you the phone number to call eBay Direct. Now, today's agenda, we're going to talk about eBay, of course, PayPal, researching items to sell on eBay. We're going to talk about listing items, shipping, supplies, fees. I'm going to give you some tips on taking photos. My personal selling tips, I'm going to offer information about follow-up help, and we will have a drawing at the end of all my workshops. Now, I don't go into step-by-step -step how to join eBay because all you have to do is go to ebay.com and click on register and just follow the instructions. Very easy, straightforward. You don't need me to hold your hand. You can also go to paypal.com, click on register, and set up your PayPal account. Very simple. If you do have problems, you'll be able to call eBay and they'll walk you through it. Now, those of you that already have an eBay account, you can change your eBay ID if you have had an old account, say your account was Grandma's Treasures and now you're gonna be selling shoes and you'd like a more uh, branded, account with a logo and everything. So you are able to change your eBay ID if you need to. And the good news is your feedback will follow you. So once you change your name, no worries, your feedback will um, follow you along with that as well. And you could actually have up to seven eBay IDs. It's not recommended, <laughs> but the opportunity is there if you would like to have more than one eBay account. I find it difficult to juggle more than one eBay account, but it's up to you. And then you can also, um, when you create your PayPal account, it'll be your email address. That'll be your PayPal ID. Easy to remember 
and easy to tell people, hey, PayPal me, and all you have to do is give them your email address. Now, if you don't learn anything at all from me today, the most important thing about being successful on eBay is research. Research, research, and you'll hear me say that a lot because I know firsthand how research can make or break an eBay sale. So as a consignment seller especially, I get people that come to me all the time and say, oh, this is worth millions. I, I saw it on the um, road show. They had it on the road show, so it was worth millions. Let's put it on eBay and make millions. Or they read it in a collector book. The collector book says that record is worth millions. So let's put it on eBay. <laughs> or the they'll have a paper from an appraiser that says it's worth millions. And people don't realize that, especially in jewelry, many times the appraiser form is basically for insurance reasons. It's not really for resale reasons, but it will give you a, a good explanation of an item. However, the dollar amount many times, not every time, but 99% of the time is not the same price that you would be able to get on eBay. Or, or they'll say, I read it on Google, so it must be true. Well, this is why we need to sit down and research things on eBay. And you'll see at the top of every eBay page, there is a bar that will let you do some shopping, which by the way, I'm gonna recommend you go do some shopping because it's the best and the fastest way to start learning. And all you do is type in a few words of what you're looking for in that bar. I just recently bought some chapstick on eBay. It was like $2.50 free shipping for two genuine chapsticks. <laughs> and I found them on eBay. So you just type it in the search bar, go do some shopping. Everything you can think of, you can find on eBay. And that experience will teach you how to, to sell because you'll pay attention. You pay attention to how did they ship it? How did this process work? How did the feedback work? And it's like baby steps. It lets you get a good um, feel for getting started to sell. All right, so after you're done selling or shopping, off to the right of the toolbar you'll find, or the search bar, you'll find the word advanced. And you want to go ahead and click on advanced. And when you click that, this is where it's going to bring you to another area that will let you do deeper search, advanced search. So you type in a few keywords of what you're going to search for. And then the important thing is you put a check box in the check mark in the box called completed listings. Those are the only two things to worry about on this page. And then just click search once you have your item in there. So for this example, we're gonna search Starbucks coffee mug, three words, Starbucks coffee mug. And then we're gonna check mark completed listings and click on search. So let's go. Now what happens is it'll bring up all of the current listings, or excuse me, the current, or the ended listings, the ones that are completed, they're over with. And we'll see that there are 42,684 listings with those three words, Starbucks coffee mug. Now, I don't want to go through all of those listings. We'll be here for months. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our search bar. And there's a sort tool off to the right at the top. And when you click on that, it's in a drop creates a drop-down box. And when you um, see the drop-down box, it'll let you have, you'll see that there are different choices. Now, side note, if you're shopping on eBay, you can adjust that to lowest price first and find the best deal for the item that you're shopping for. However, in this situation on advanced search, we're looking for the highest price first. Show me the money, let's see. So what happens is it'll reorganize all of those 40 some thousand Starbucks mugs and it'll bring all of the highest price ones to the top. Now we're gonna pay attention. If it's in green, it means that it's sold. If it's in red or black, it did not sell. Now you wanna take a look at 
the top mug that sold for $611. So the first thing we notice is that it had 32 bids. And that means that they had an auction. The, the bottom one also was an auction. They had 31 bids. So people got in a little bidding war trying to win this. Also pay attention to the words that they use. Now if I had one of these, I would be listing it just like they did because I want to follow success. So you want to learn from successful sales. And this is what, this is how you become better and better with selling on eBay, is by following success. You'll also notice that at the bottom of each listing, you'll see the words sell one like this or sell now, whichever, I just want to point that out because we're going to, I'm going to use that later, but I just wanted to show that to you now. Also, as you're looking up, you want to pay attention to what kind of words did they use in the title? Was it an auction or a buy it now? And did they have free shipping or not? Now, notice the one at the top, the Cleveland Starbucks mug. This is from the, um, I think they call these the City Series. This was a, a series that was out. You can still find these here and there. Now, they did a buy it now. They did not do an auction. So I can't help to wonder if they would have sold it for more money if they would have done an auction. And the bottom one, they had 200 reusable coffee mugs, coffee cups, and they started it at $290 as a buy it now. It was not an auction and it didn't work out for them. It's in black. So I call that take it out for a spin. So you can't blame him. He tried it, didn't work. So there's always a plan B and that would be probably to run an auction or to drop his price or just depends on the current market, on his current market research to see how those reusable mugs are selling. So this is how we learn. Now eBay, I should have mentioned sooner, but you also need to download the eBay app on your smartphone. And I know you all have smartphones. Well, unless my mother's here, she has a dumb phone. <laughs> but um, you want to download the eBay app on your smartphone or your tablet. And when you do that, you'll notice that the search bar on the eBay smartphone or tablet has uh, a place for you to search. On the search bar, off to the right, you'll see a little camera or a barcode scanner. Now eBay just launched a photo recognition tool which is brand new to the platform, to the marketplace, and it's pretty amazing. I'm excited about it, but it's not out rolled out for everybody yet. So if you don't see a camera, you'll see a barcode, but don't worry, your camera will be coming soon. And the way that the barcode works is you click on it and then you hold your phone up to any barcode and then it'll scan it automatically and it'll search eBay for you. So in this situation, I was in Ross and I scanned a dress, <clears throat> excuse me, I was in, this is when Ivanka Trump dresses were hot and I was in Ross and they had them on the clearance rack up in Gainesville for $9.99. So I scanned them and I noticed that they were selling on eBay. Now it's in green, $82.99, $83.49, $89.99. So I didn't mind paying $9.99 for these dresses. And I actually sold all of mine but one. And the um, it worked out really well. I made, I made a good amount of money. And what I did was I started mine at $110. And a couple sold for 110 and then the prices started dropping as the market became bombarded. Because that's usually what happens. And I've learned that when the market's hot, that's when you get listing and you start selling. Because once the market's bombarded, then it, the prices drop and things change. Just like Beanie Baby days. <laughs> Back in the BB, Beanie Baby days, I used to get $1,000 for one Beanie Baby. And now we're lucky to get a dollar. So it's, that's why we have to go by the current market value on eBay, just like with buying a house. It's very comparable. Now on your smartphone, you can also adjust um, the filter tool to either sold or completed. And you can adjust the sort bar on your smartphone to highest price to lowest price. 
So you could do the same thing on your, your app than you could on your desktop. Now to recap, go to advanced search on eBay. Type in a few keywords, checkbox that completed listing, or you can use sold on your phone. Click on search, adjust the sort bar to highest price first, and follow success. That's the bottom line. That's the, the key procedure for researching items to see what the current market value is on eBay. Now, you can take it a step further. eBay does only allow you to go back, I believe it's like 10 days. In some categories, you can go back a month, 30 days. It just depends which category you're in. But some, of, some categories, you can't go back very far. So this is why I use WorthPoint. WorthPoint is an advanced research tool, and I can't survive without it because it lets me go back 10 years. And you think, why do I need to go back 10 years? Well, I I've been listing action figures right now, and there's many action figures that are not currently on eBay, and they haven't been currently selling on eBay. Nobody's had them because they're kind of rare. So I've been able to go back in the archives at WorthPoint and identify these um, action figures and also be able to copy the title and the description from auctions and listings from 10 years ago. So here's an example of something that I looked up recently. I had a client bring me his collection of shaving brushes. I didn't know anything about shaving brushes. Well, I do now. Like I said, the more you look things up, the better you become. So if you type in researchisking.com, that actually will give you a seven-day trial of WorthPoint. So I just want you to jot that down so that you can use my referral, and it'll give you a seven-day, seven-lookup trial to go test it out. And it's really handy to be able to see how much those valuables are that you have sitting around the house. You'll be surprised. And that also has an app. And what I love most about this app, not only can I look items up while I'm in the thrift store, but it also will tell me where the local antique shops are. And it lets me know where those are so I can um, see where I want to go shopping. So it, it'll check, it'll show you the Google Maps and then what everything that's nearby that you can shop for. So that's quite handy. The cost is starts at $19.99 a month, and that's for the basic Worthopedia. And of course, you do get a discount if you prepay for the year in advance, which I recommend. I'm always about saving a few dollars. And then there's also what's called Marks and Library. Marks and Library are, is $22.99 a month. And what it does is it lets you search um, the marks, and they have libraries on file, like McCoy Pottery, they have glassware. Back in the day, we used to have to go buy all these books to look things up or to search on the internet, where you can go to the, the actual catalogs and browse through the pages of a collectible book, and it's really nice to be able to do that. And then, of course, they have a package where you can combine it all, the Markson Library and Worthopedia for $39.99. Bottom line, just type in researchisking.com, and you can test out whichever product you'd like to try. One side note, <clears throat> before I forget, on the Marks, I had a client bring me a bunch of sterling silver, and it had all these crazy symbols on them, and I had no clue what they meant. And I was able to go into the Marks Library and identify what each symbol meant or represented it, represented. And because I was able to do that, when I listed it on eBay, now I was able to give it a proper name, a proper title, which meant I could make more money versus just putting it up there and saying, it has hallmarks on the handle. Please uh, look at the photos don't know what they mean, 
and roll the dice. So if you have proper keywords in that listing, you'll make more money. Researchesking.com. All right, let's talk about photos. Excuse me. Now, I like to use these trifold boards. And you can pick these up at any Hobby Lobby. I've seen them at Walmart. Even the dollar store has them. The recommended colors are baby blue, black, and white. Those are the three basic. Now in this one, I, I kind of experiment sometimes with different colors for fun. But the biggest mistake people make is they get too close to their photos. And when you get too close, when you upload it to eBay, it makes it blurry. So you don't want to do that. You don't have to do that. You can stand back a little bit farther. And the magic happens when you crop it. And when you crop it, it brings in the proper, they call them pixels, it brings in the proper um, view to give you a nice, clean, crisp look. And you want to try, like I said, different backgrounds. And then as you can see, when you crop it, you don't want to see the background. You don't want to see all kinds of other things. You want to just look at your item. I saw a lady, the, or lady, a person, had an action figure the other day, and I could see their trashed house in the background. So she had it just sitting up, and you could see the cat carrier and, and <laughs> things going on in the background, and it was so distracting. Another person had um, a, a dress hanging in the door well of the kitchen, and you could see the dishes in the sink and the trash dish. <laughs> so you don't do that. Another lady put, or I keep saying lady, it could be anybody, put their baby clothes in the grass, spread them all out in the grass in the yard, and then took pictures. Not a good idea. Clear, crisp photos with a, a clean background. And then you want to also make sure you take pictures of any flaws. If there's a crack or a chip, you want to have, if there's a stain or something's odd, include photos. eBay allows you 12 free photos, so take advantage of that. The more photos, every photo is an opportunity for a sale. That's the way to think about it. Because people like myself, when I shop, I use my phone, so I kind of flick my finger through all the pictures. And if there's only one or two, I tend to leave and I'll look at someone else who has more photos. Top tips, 12 free photos, take advantage of that. You also want to have good lighting. What I did was I bought one of those long white tables actually from Walmart and I clamped two lamps, two lights on each side. They clip onto the table. And then I bought the LED light bulbs. Your living room lamp will be will cause items to be kind of yellowed. So you want to avoid um, yellow light bulbs. You want to go with an LED light, something that's going to give good lighting. And make sure you have a solid background. And nowadays you don't even need to use a digital camera. You have your smartphone. And that's how I take all my photos, is with my iPhone. And then don't forget to crop. Now, if you don't know how to crop or don't understand what that means, don't worry about it because when you upload your photos to eBay, they actually have a built-in crop tool, so you could do that later. And in my follow-up email, I have more videos and tutorials on my website. You can just go to my website and put in eBay photo in the search bar, and it'll show you some of the tutorials that I have on site. All right, let's talk about listing an item on eBay now. There's basically three styles of listing items on eBay. So the first style is an auction. And you can start an auction as low as a penny. Now keep in mind that if you start an auction at a penny and only one person comes along and bids, well guess what? I call that shipping with a smile. <laughs> that means that you have to sell that item because it is a binding contract and they did win it fair and square. Auction with a buy it now. This will let you add you shoot it out for a penny, start your auction at a penny, or they can buy it now for $12.99. That's um, included. So you're allowed to do um, an auction with a buy it now, or just do an auction. 
fixed price, same thing as buy it now, but you would start your listing at say $49.99 or $89.99. You can set the price high or low and then you can also add make an offer. So like those Ivanka Trump dresses, I listed at $110 with make an offer and some sold for 110 and some people came in and offered 85 and I took it. There's also a reserve and I'm not a fan of reserves because there is a fee to run a reserve, but it's available to you. The good thing about it is if you put a reserve on your auction, if your item doesn't sell, I mean, if your reserve is not met, you don't have to sell your item. So for example, I had a chopper motorcycle up for $12,000, well, a reserve for $12,000. I listed it at auction starting at $99.99. And it only went up to $9,000. And it was about to close at $9,000. And that means that I did not have to sell it to that person for $9,000. But at the last minute, a sniper came in from New York and the price went up, went over the reserve to $12,100. So for those of you that don't know what a sniper is, that there is um, sniping tools which let people, I don't use them, my husband is a sniper. <laughs> but snipers are people that bid at the last second or the last few seconds of an auction ending. And you don't know who they are, you don't, they don't bid the entire time, they wait until the last few seconds. Now research helps you determine that listing style. Should you do an auction or a fixed price because you're following success? What was working for the, the successful listings? Did they start their price high? Did they start it low? Did they start their auction high or low? Or did they have their buy it now? Did they have make an offer? That's why research helps you determine which direction to go. Now here's the fast track to eBay listing. As I showed you earlier, it's called sell one like this. Now you come into your item, it's in green, it means that it's sold and you have the same item. All you do is click on sell one like this. And you'll be able to see this on every listing. And the good thing about it is it'll actually pull in information from that listing to save you time. So the first thing it did was it'll show you the category that they put it in because when you list an item on eBay you have to choose a category so it's done for you. Now the next thing it'll pull in is the title and you can review the title you can adjust it as you like. I like to have the word new at the front of my listing of my title the bottom line is there, eBay allows you 80 characters on that title, so you want to take advantage of that and use all 80 characters and think of it as bait on the hook. Every word in your title is a piece of bait that goes out to the eBay seat. So the more um, words that complement your listing, the better your odds are for a sale. For example, you don't want beautiful, lovely cup. <laughs> because who's going to type in beautiful, lovely cup when they're searching on eBay? No one. So I would add the word cup to this uh, in addition to the word mug because it would increase my odds for those people that search for cups and not for mugs. Now the second fast style is to go to current live listings. And when you go to a current live listing, you'll actually see the sell now button at the bottom. It's usually below the photo or they could by the time you see this they may have moved it. But just look around on the page it's called sell now. And when you click that again it'll bring in the category for you. It'll also bring in the same title for you. You can adjust it as needed and then your next job is to click on condition. Is it new or is it used? And I generally skip subtitles. They don't show up in the standard search, so I don't usually use those. The number third, three way to list on eBay is to go to the top bar on any eBay page and you'll see the word sell. And all you do is click on that. And when you click on sell, it will 
ask you, what do you want to sell? Now, eBay has made it so easy for listing nowadays that you can just, they're going to practically hold your hand. And there's going to be little pop-ups that, that will guide you along the way, and they'll make suggestions. And you can take it or leave it, whatever they suggest. Now, you just type in a few words of what you want to sell. So we're going to just type in Starbucks Coffee Mug Florida, or it could be um, Beanie Baby Dinosaur or Bear or um, Cutco Knife, whatever it is that you're going to sell. And then it'll eBay will say, well, we think you should put it in this category. And so you can take a look at what the category options are. And if you feel that none of those categories are a good fit because your research showed they were in a different category, then you can browse categories or you can choose recently used categories and it'll bring up the categories that you've been using previously. No matter which way you list, they all have the same information, which is Choose the category, put in a title, is it new or is it used? We're going to add photos, we're going to talk about the description, set the price, add shipping, and a return policy. That is your master checklist. The only thing missing from this, now that I look at it, is after category, there is a condition box. and that is something that's a little bit newer, so I need to add that. But it's category, condition box, title, newer used, photos, description, price, shipping, and a return policy. So let's continue. We've got our category, our title, is it newer or used? Now we're going to add photos. Now this is the part that I skip because I am listing on my desktop or my laptop. So I skipped the photo part because I'm going to use my phone to add the photos later from my app. So for those of you that um, add them from your app, you can still come in here and or pull them in from your desktop. Now here's that condition box before I forget. So the condition box is where you type in any flaws or any defects, anything that you need to stand out and make sure to represent your item. eBay will protect you if you have the proper information in there. If your item has a stain on it and you have it in there and then the person complains that there was a stain on it, then um, you can say, well, I did state that in my condition box, but if you did not, then you'll be responsible for return shipping or giving them a refund. But eBay will protect you if you have that information in there. Now you're just going to click on Add Photos if you're at your desktop or your laptop. And you can click on there and it'll bring in all of the photos that you have on your computer. And you'll see as they upload it takes a, a few minutes for them all to be brought in. And then once they upload, and the same process is from your phone. So they still upload like this. Now you notice that once they upload, at the bottom you'll see a tool that is crop. And if you click on that, it'll let you adjust your photos. You can rotate, you can brighten, and now eBay just launched recently a sharpen tool. Now our description box, bottom line, describe the item, hello. You want to keep it short, easy to read, left margin, number 18 font, black text with white background, and don't forget the flaws. This is your checklist. Now what I like to do is I'll type about five or six words and I'll hit the enter key. Type a few words, hit the enter key. And you think, why is she doing that? Well, it's because I want everything in the left margin so that when people are reading my description box on their smartphone or their tablet, it shows up brilliantly. And also, I'm old now, so I like a larger font. So I try to do that for everybody so that people don't need to get their readers. Everything's right in their face. They can read it all. It's easy. And just use black 
text. Don't be getting crazy with all these rainbow colors and different colors and graphics. It's not necessary anymore. We don't want moving graphics. I don't want to look at your other items moving by in a scrolling banner. And most importantly though, keep those descriptions short and sweet. There's nothing worse than coming into an eBay listing and it goes on and on and on and on and on. And, on. and you think you need an attorney or there's some hidden um, rules in there. So you don't need all too much information. I don't want to know about grandma visiting on Wednesday or the dog walk or <laughs> just, just describe the item. And don't forget the flaws. Also, you want a good vibe on your item. You want to have on your listing. You don't want to have any negative, any negative at all. Don't be telling me about feedback days or if you don't leave me bad feedback or if you have a problem, if if there's a problem with my item, then contact me before leaving feedback. Don't put all that in there because it automatically leaves a bad taste in, in people's mouth. Now I live by what I'm preaching. So if you just go to askdanna.com, that'll take you right to my eBay store and the proof is there. This is how I do my listings. Now after you got your description box, so we've got our category, our title, our condition, we skipped the photos and then, um, or we uploaded the photos and then we did our description. Now we're going to let eBay know if we're going to run an auction or a buy it now, a fixed price. So you just choose the drop down box, auction or fixed price. Now if you do an auction, the tab will be there for you to put a checkbox for add a buy it now option if you'd like to. eBay is also going to make suggestions to you. We suggest you start an auction at 99 cents. You can take or leave their suggestion because you've done your research so you kind of know ahead of time which direction you're going to go. And then you want to let them know how many days you're going to run your auction. One day, three days, five days, seven days, ten days. You can choose how long your auction is going to run. Now the general auction um, is standard as seven days. Now if I have a high-end item that I want to get added extra exposure, I'm going to run it for ten days. And I started on a Thursday about two or three in the afternoon. And that way I get two weekends out of it and it ends on um, a Sunday. So that works out really well. Next, you can also schedule your listings if you want to. So you would set it for um, the future. So say I, I'm going to be busy this weekend, but I want to list now, but I want my items to end on Sunday. So you can go ahead and adjust that very easily and then schedule your listings in advance. Next, you're going to let them know how to ship. Now again, eBay is going to make suggestions. They'll say the estimated cost to ship this is between $5.95 and $11.55 and that varies on their location. That's for a two pound package with those measurements. So they'll give you some ideas. Or you can also choose priority, or excuse me, free shipping, which many times is recommended. Now it's also going to ask you about international shipping. And there is a place for you to say yes or no. And I suggest you say no international shipping and then say yes to the global shipping program. And what that means is eBay has a fulfillment center located in Kentucky. And so all you do is you're going to ship your item to Kentucky and then eBay is going to take it over and they're going to ship it for you to whichever country that the person bought it from. So you want to say yes to global shipping because now your listing is going to show up in 69 countries. And if you say no to global shipping, you're not going to get as much exposure. And who cares what country they're in? Um, they still pay you through PayPal. You still ship it to a domestic address in Kentucky. And then eBay takes over and they ship it out of the country for you. And you're also protected. If the item breaks, eBay will take care of it. Or if they leave you a bad feedback for shipping, eBay will take care of it. 
you want to also purchase a shipping scale. You can't survive without a shipping scale. You will lose money, guaranteed, if you do not have one. So, and as I mentioned, the bathroom scale is not a skip shipping scale because it lies. It lies terribly. Mine lies awful. So, it's not going to work. So, um, Hobby Lobby has a, a good one. There's different shops that have them. Of course, eBay has one. And I actually will have uh, links for you to take a look. I suggest just getting a 70 pound digital shipping scale and there's plenty of them on eBay. And then you also need some good measuring tape. I like to, I swear by getting them at the, the seamstress, um, Joanne Fabrics or a fabric store versus um, other places. So I just feel better getting mine there. And then just choose package or thick envelope. I'm just going to help make your life easier right now. So just choose package or thick envelope. Now, when it comes shipping day, we may ship differently, but we're just going to get everything set up. Also, there's what's called local pickup. I do not recommend or suggest that you choose local pickup only. And the reason is it pulls you out of search. So you don't get as much exposure as you deserve, which means if I'm selling a go-kart, if I listed a go-kart, which I did, I had a gentleman from Atlanta come and pick it up. He didn't mind driving over here. Maybe that go-kart wouldn't have shown up in his search had I chosen local pickup only. So if you have, I know some of you were talking about um, having furniture, and I love selling furniture. And the magic, or the important part of selling furniture is um, you can put, we'll ship anywhere in your description box. You'll put, we'll ship anywhere in the world, buyer makes an arrangement for shipping. And then where it says type for package or thick envelope, you're going to choose freight shipping. So more on that later, but just to let you know. Now, you're going to have to choose which kind of shipping you're going to use. Now, this is not in stone. This is not necessarily the exact way that you're going to ship on shipping day, but this is just a way to get your listing going. And I suggest to make your life easier because it can be overwhelming looking at this list. Just choose USPS Parcel Select Ground just to get the item up and running and so that you can move on. Next, you've got to add your PayPal email, which so that um, eBay will know where to send your money, and the zip code of your the item. So wherever it's located, if your item's in Denver, make sure you put Denver, wherever your item's located. And then a handling time. One business day is best. However, if you cannot ship within one business day, then of course you need to change that. Same day is even better. Now eBay really is promoting, um, you get a higher, a higher um, rank in search if you choose one business day or same day. So I highly recommend that if possible. Now, if you choose same day, there's a, a way for you to adjust your cutoff time. I think I made mine 11 a.m. for same day shipping. So you can adjust your cutoff time. Now, if you do choose, what, no matter what you choose, you need to make sure that you ship according to what you said you would ship. Because if you say one day handling time and you don't ship for a couple days, then you're going to actually get a strike on your account for not living up to your expectations. So if it says one business day and if the person buys it at, and they pay at three o'clock on a Friday, technically you don't have to ship that till Monday because Saturday, Sunday is not business days. However, I still ship on weekends, but it's up to you. And then you want to um, choose returns or not returns. Now, in my opinion, if you choose no returns, you actually lose money because people think, well, what's wrong with this? Or why is he not accepting returns? And you may lose a sale. So I very rarely get returns. I do get some, but not many. And the great thing about returns is you can now choose to add a restocking fee. You can add like a 10% or a 20%.
And especially for those of you selling clothing, I recommend that you add a 20% restocking fee just to cover yourself in case someone wears that on the weekend and then sends it back. And then that way um, you can make a few bucks off of that, not be out. Now you can either preview it, save it for later, or list it. So it's not in stone. You don't have to um, list it right away. You can just go through this process of what I just walked you through, and then you can practice. So the good news is that it will not blow up. <laughs> so you can just have fun with it. Go ahead and save it for later. You can delete it. You can try it over again. You can just click on Starbucks coffee mug and just follow the prompts to pretend like you're listing it and then do it again tomorrow. But nothing goes live until you actually click that list it. Main thing is just to practice until you're confident. All right. Now there's three basic fees on eBay. You have your insertion fee, your final value fee, and your PayPal fee. Now an insertion fee, or you could call it a listing fee, for your first 50 or 100 listings per calendar month are free on auction. So eBay's gonna let you list some items for free. I don't know how many they're gonna give you until you log in and start selling they could offer you 1,200. I just don't know. There is no set number because I've heard many different numbers from different sellers. So they run specials all the time. Also, Buy It Now is free to add to your auction. And if you set, if you have a fixed price, like you have those dresses up for $110, they will cost you 30 cents as the average to list it. And if you have a book or a, a record album or that Richard Simmons, Sweat to the Oldies, VHS tape, it's going to cost you $0.10 cents if you list that at, at a fixed price. Of course, auction's free. And when you list an item on eBay, you may be charged a listing or insertion fee, which means... Um, or I should say regardless of the quantity. So if I have 15 dresses, I can list them at $49.99, but I, it's one listing, and then in the quantity box, I have 15. So I only pay $0.30. Cents. I don't have to pay $0.30 cents times 15. Now your final value fee. <clears throat> if the item sells, you're charged a final value fee and it's about 10%. So whatever your item sells for, you will pay 10% to eBay for that. And it also includes shipping. So for example, if your item sold for $50 and you charged $5 shipping, now you're gonna pay 10% on $55. Now of course, if you have free shipping, then that won't be the case. Next we have the PayPal fee. Now the PayPal fee is 2.9% per item plus 30 cents per transaction. Pretty straightforward. Now here's how I live my life. 15% average. So that means that if I'm going out to Goodwill or to a garage sale, which is my favorite, and I'm going to buy something or I'm at Ross, before I buy it, before I buy those dresses, so if they're $9.99, no matter what I sell them for, eBay is going to take 15% between eBay and PayPal. Fees are going to run about 15%. So I always have to factor that in. If I'm at, um, I always use the Wilton cake pans because the Wilton cake pans, they were asking $3 a pan and they were only selling for like $8. Well, that's not a good profit margin. If I sell it for $8, I paid three and 15% of that $8 goes to fees. Not, not a big profit margin. <laughs> now the sweetest sound in the world is when your phone goes cha-ching. And that means that you've had a sale. Too bad my phone didn't go off while I was doing this. It'd be funny if it did. All right. And then um, 
you'll also get an email. So if you didn't hear the cha-ching or you don't have a smartphone, you'll also get an email. And it, when you log into eBay, you'll see it on your dashboard. But the best part is when you get a notice from PayPal. By the way, you can download the PayPal app on your phone as well. And you can do business right from your phone with your PayPal app. You can send money, receive money. You can um, check. You'll get a notice from PayPal also on your eBay dashboard. So when you log in, it'll say that it's paid, it's time to ship. Now, I know many people are afraid of shipping, and hopefully after today, you won't be afraid of shipping, because it really is not, it's not hard. The first step is to go to USPS.com, create an account, and go ahead and order some boxes. And in my follow-up email, I actually have a list. Or you can go to, if you're in the archives, go to my website at powersullymom.com, and in the search bar, just type in, shipping boxes and I'm sure you'll find the list. I have a recommended list of ones that I recommend that people use. Now your packaging supplies will be a postal scale or shipping scale, boxes, packing peanuts, bubble wrap, clear packing tape, and a printer with paper or labels. Those are those, that's your checklist. Now on bubble wrap, if you're going to ship glassware, I don't, I don't even, I recommend only buying big bubbles. Small bubbles just don't cut it as far as um, protection goes, especially on um, items like that. So you definitely want to use big bubbles. You want to have a properly sized box. Fill your packaging material all around. So your inside item should not touch the box size. That means I shipped I you I shipped 86 head vases. I think it was 89 head vases. And every one of them, first I put in newspaper, then I rolled bubble wrap, the big bubbles around it. And then I wrap I laid a piece of cardboard down and then I rolled cardboard around it. So it made like a cylinder. And then in my box, I used the priority mail shoe box. And the priority mail shoe box is by weight. So I put packing at the bottom, slid my cylinder in, and then put packing around the cylinder and on top, and not one broke. And I shipped them all that way. And then I also write fragile glass on the sides of my boxes as well. And then I'll weigh my box and then type, I actually write the weight at the top just to make it easier when I'm ready to ship. Now your eBay dashboard will actually have you have a place that says print shipping label. So after you see your, your items sold, all you do is click on print shipping label. And when you do that, it'll bring up the address. It'll bring up the return address, the um, your address, it'll all be there for you. And all you have to do is click on um, compare delivery services. Now this is the part that people don't realize is so important. When you click on compare delivery services, it'll actually bring up all types of options for you to ship your item. So you can pick and choose. You can now you're going to box up your item, you're going to put it on the scale, and you're going to put on the exact weight and measurements of your box. And then when you click on calculate, it'll show you all of the choices. And then you can look through your list which one's going to work best. Just off to the side here on the left, you'll see Regional A and Regional B boxes. Go ahead and order yourself a couple of those as well because sometimes it's cheaper for you to put an item in a regional A or regional B and if you don't have them on hand then you can't use it of course and you can't get those at the post office. You have to order them. So once you choose which one you want you just click on save and then it'll bring it into the system and nothing is in stone yet. Now, if we need to add additional insurance, you can click on Add 
signature confirmation, add insurance, whichever, whichever is needed. Now keep in mind if you have a priority mail, you'll automatically get insurance up to $50. When you're a top rated seller, you actually get insurance up to $100. And then once you click purchase postage, now it's going to take that stamp money right out of your PayPal account. And now you're ready to print the label. So nothing is in stone until you click, you click purchase postage. And now it'll have it ready for you to print your label. You just print it out on any printer and then eight and a half by 11, you just cut out cut out your label, trim the edges, and then securely tape it onto your package. Very easy. Now you can review from your eBay page, you can go in and review your orders at any time. You can look at the shipping label section. First you just click on orders, it's a drop down box, and you'll see the shipping label section. And when you click on that, it'll show you a history of all of your shipping labels that you've had recently. It'll have the breakdown so you can reprint them, you can void them. You have 24 hours to void a shipping label if needed. And if um, you can also click on the tracking number, you can see they all start with nine, nine, four, zero, five, five. If you click on that, it'll actually bring up from the United States Postal Service site automatically and it'll show you the exact tracking of where the package is. So bottom line, you want to ship immediately upon notification of payment. Never ship an item until you've received payment. Delivery to the buyer is your responsibility. You should buy insurance for high value items and you may include the price in your shipping costs. So like say, if I'm shipping, um, I'm selling some shoes, which I sell shoes a lot. Shoes are kind of hot, to both new and used. And I sell a lot of shoes. And when you, um, I know that I can get those in a flat rate legal envelope. And so I know that it'll cost me under say $7. So I can charge $8 for shipping or I can add that to my total, whatever I'm asking for the shoes. So those are um, some things that you could do. Tracking numbers are automatically added when you print your labels through eBay. So if for some crazy reason you still have to take your box to the post office, office which I don't recommend because you're going to pay more money when you do that, but if you have to, then the post off, ask the post office for a tracking number and then you need to get back to your computer or use your smartphone and you need to manually add that tracking number and make sure it's the right one into the listing and you'll see there's a place that says add tracking number because eBay will not have any record of you shipping your item unless you do that. So you want to get a shipping scale, go to the USPS website, order some supplies, research, research, research. I can't state that enough. Researchisking.com. 80 characters you want to add. All keywords, remember bait on the hook. You want to have 12 clear photos, nice clean backgrounds, cropped, short, sweet descriptions, left margin, if you're going to have free shipping, it's recommended. Or if something is so heavy and you're like, I have no idea how I'm going to ship this or pay for this. You can put it on your scale. You put the weight and the measurements in your description and or in your um, shipping area and you choose, there's a drop down box to choose calculated. And when you choose calculated, you do not have to know how much shipping is because no matter where they live, anywhere in the world, the system will show them how much shipping is to them. So there's no guessing game on your end and it's kind of the easiest way to go and especially if it's a heavy non-breakable item you can choose FedEx and then choose calculated and again it'll, it'll um, show all of that shipping information to them. Say yes to global shipping. 
Um, and then you can say no to international outside of global shipping. That way you'll show up in those 69 countries and you don't have to worry about custom forms. You don't have to worry about anything. You just ship it to Kentucky. Print your labels and don't forget to click on compare shipping prices first. You want secure packaging and don't forget feedback. Now eBay feels that when the person pays and or they buy from you and they pay, it's nice to leave feedback. So you can leave feedback and thank them for shopping with you. So it's up to you. Now a few final words. A lot of times people ask about taxes. I can, I'm not a legal tax advisor, so I can't give you legal advice, but I will send you, um, there are some links here that let you um, go research that on your own. You can go to paypal.com slash IRS. There's the number of my accountant, uh, Dina. She will be happy to answer any questions you may have about taxes, and or she can do your taxes for you. And if she does, give her my name because she'll give me $15. So I <laughs> appreciate that. Now, I can tell you that nothing goes to the IRS until you have had $20,000 or 200 transactions go through your PayPal account. When that happens, then a 1099 is sent to the IRS. So eBay in a snapshot, you'll be a part of over, well, your items will be over 110 million items are available worldwide, over 90 million active users worldwide, approximately 7 million items added every day, a pair of shoes sells every 8 seconds, a motor part or accessory sells every second, a cell phone every 6 seconds, and a car Ka-Chang sells every 90 seconds. So my motto is there's plenty of eBay for us all to be blessed and prosper. We can all go any direction we'd like. We can make a living on eBay. We can just sell things from around the house. It's up to you. You can take eBay to any level that you choose. Now here's the phone number if you'd like to call eBay. So I suggest you put this, you write this down, or you can just Google eBay phone number <laughs> and you'll be able to find it. So the thing is, if you get stuck on printing a label, call eBay. If you get st stuck on setting up your account, call eBay. Anything that you need help with at eBay, you can call them every 10 minutes. <laughs> just. There's no fee and they're there to assist you. You're now ready to source, list, manage, and sell more merchandise. Now that all your money's in PayPal, how do you get it out? Well, you can transfer it to your bank account. You can, tr you can also order a debit card. And your goal is to reach top rated seller status so that you can get discounts on your fees. Become a part of 90 million active members worldwide. And of course, you can learn more about all of this at powersellingmom.com. I have lots of articles and tutorials on different things. Now, of course, you're watching this as a replay and we don't have surveys. <laughs> so um, you can go to my website and you can contact me direct from my website. I have a new system on my website that will let you book a call. So if you have a quick eBay question or you need some assistance or you need um, that's free, but if you need some longer term assistance where you need um, an hour consult or a, or a half hour or you want me to look at things in your store that's going to take time, you can purchase um, an hour or a half hour or you can purchase a package. It's a $300 package for me to go in and really assess your eBay store and I'll write a report about that. So those are just some other options. Or you can book a private workshop with me and come to my home office from 9 a.m. to 3.30 and spend the day with me and it includes lunch. Uh, the current price as of today is $3.75 for, per person. And I do have discounts for couples. All right, so that's enough. Now I wish you all the best for success. 
I'm Dana Crawford. Have an awesome eBay selling day. Bye.